Okay, coming online here. Ah, lots of people here. Let's mute that and um, and are we ready here. Okay, let's go. Work, work. Why don't you work? Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. My name is Michael Markowski, and I'm going to be showing you how to do some drawings for the next uh, hour. And then after that, there's some time to look at your drawings and to give you feedback on them and help you get even better at drawing. Um, so what you're going to need is your sketchbook and we're going to kind of launch right into things because I want to get to lots of stuff. Today is, um, probably the day that you've been waiting for. <laughs> you've probably been thinking, okay, all of this is really, really great. I'm learning all of these basic techniques, but can we just start drawing things? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to actually, I'm going to show you how to draw simple things like um, cats and dogs, and tigers. Maybe you've been watching a little bit of Netflix lately and you got onto the Tiger King um, phenomenon. So in honor of that, we'll do something that is particularly relevant. We're going to draw a tiger like you saw the thumbnail. So, um, if you've got your sketchbook, you got your pencils, you got them nice and sharpened, we're going to do a little warm-up drawing. Let me just, oh, I got to build something really quickly here. Where should I put this? Up here. Your sketchbook down there. Okay. A little bit bigger. Oh, maybe we'll put this. Okay. So, I'm super excited because I've been <laughs> hooking up a whole bunch of new camera equipment and so things probably are looking too much different than they normally do but for me it's a big big change so there's a little bit of every day I'm doing this another little tech leap forward so what I want to start as a little warm-up drawing is to show you how to draw something like a stick figure but to do it maybe better than you think you're capable of doing. Because I often I go to a, a party somewhere and somebody's like, oh, you're an artist, I can't even draw a stick figure. I can't even draw a straight line. Well, first of all, drawing straight lines is not a prerequisite for being an artist. Um, I know many artists who, who could not draw a straight line. Um, and uh, I mean, why would we want to like, why would that be even, you know, a arbiter of a particular kind of taste? But we want to be like a robot, right? We want to be able to draw pretty much anything but a straight line, right? Um, okay, so the other thing is drawing a stick figure. So let's just, let's draw a stick figure. Something that, you know, people say, claim they can't do, right? So here's your stick figure. Right now, that actually I don't I think that's fine. You know, if I was drawing a um, often when I'm trying to come up with a um, you know I'm drawing something on the spot for like a client. I used to run a, a carpentry business. I might s draw a stick figure next to let's say a bookshelf, and I'll do this kind of a little bit in perspective, right? So I might draw something like that in order to convey the height or the size of something, right? So I might draw something kind of quick like that, right? So here, again, just as a refresher to last week, we would imagine these vanishing points over here. And that's also just a good reminder that if, if you're drawing something in perspective, it doesn't need to be all exactly perfect. Right? As long as we kind of understand how it works, that is helpful. So, but 
a little simple stick figure like that helps people know, oh, okay, well, this, this is, you know, probably, you know, a seven-foot bookshelf or something, right? So let's take this to the next level if we want to draw a stick figure and get better at it. And I'm going to do a the kind of next, the other drawing course that I normally teach, um, which is all about figuration and drawing portraits and all that kind of stuff um, after this series of classes ends next Thursday. So then next two Tuesdays for now, I can do So, but let's build on this stick figure. So what I'm gonna do here is let's just imagine we have a rectangle for the torso, right? Your torso is kind of from your, your shoulders down to your hips, All right? So we've got um, a little box on top of there. And then let's, we're gonna put a little rectangle around these legs, all right? And then let's do the same thing. We're gonna put like a rectangle here on either side, and then we can give this thing a little neck, <laughs> right? So already this is, you know, it's a very, you know, uh, awkward figure, but it looks already a little bit more developed than your regular stick figure. So we could take this, and let's say I was, I, my original lines were drawn very lightly, and where have I got my pencil crayons hiding? Oh, here we are. So I'm just gonna grab some pencil crayons so they're out should I want to jump into this. So um, let's say I'm just gonna move to over here, and I'm just gonna try drawing this again, but without the line in the middle. So this is a good little warm up. See if you can look at that head, that huge. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so this becomes kind of like a gingerbread man, all right? Okay, so that's already, you know, it, it looks slightly more complex than your stick figure. Now, if I wanted to kind of make this look even more interesting, draw a person running or something, right? So if we were to draw the stick figure of a person running, let's say we have the head, and for our sake, we'll just a nice circle works. And let's say this is the torso, and then we've got one leg coming out in the front to run. And then we've got another leg coming in behind, like this. And we got one leg, or one arm, out here. And then another one, like this. And so here's, again, if you don't think you can draw a stick figure and you draw this, right, then you're already drawing a more advanced stick figure. But let's say we want to kind of build upon this. And maybe I'm going to use a little color here. So. I'm going to draw, I'm going to kind of outline this whole thing. And I could do this in very simple shapes. And I'm just going to turn this into a silhouette, right? So I'm kind of drawing over top of my lines. And I'm going to kind of avoid drawing some hands just yet because that is a a trickier thing to do. You can see, when I draw kind of a, those guidelines, I can also change things and decide, well, you know what, that head was, that neck was maybe a little long, so I'm going to shrink it down, right? And then I'm going to use, let's say, the side of my pencil just to really quickly color this in. So, and you could do, it doesn't have to be a blue pencil, it could be a red pencil, or it could just be a regular black pencil, right? So here would be a very nice and simple stick figure, but taken to the next level. Like, uh, 
you could easily, like imagine just from here, you could illustrate a children's book like this with just silhouetted figures. And you, you might think that's ridiculous, but why not? Go, go to your, uh, I spent a lot of time at the library, or I was before everything, all, all the world uh, changed, but you know, one of the things, even before I, I had a child, I used to spend time looking at the children's book in the li or children's books in the library, because um, I just found them very inspiring, like diff the all different ways that people would use to draw figures. So this would be one way of drawing, a st you know, and then we can, let's say, what would be another quick pose that we could have this person doing? Um, let's say somebody who's uh, well, I'm trying to think of a pose somebody just maybe somebody standing with their hands on their hips so again let's start with the head and here's the torso with a little bit of neck and then instead of drawing the leg totally spread eagle like somebody's doing snow angels we can then just go like this all right, so somebody's standing like this. So let's just take this to the next level. Let's add a little bit of a neck here. All right, and then I'm just going to kind of go around these lines. All right, and then... So the other thing too, what's great about this, and I'll just kind of, I'll color this in, and uh, and then I'm gonna show you how we could kind of really quickly, ex you know, kind of take that simple image to the next level, right? So we could easily decide, instead of just a little head like that, you know, I could make this head much bigger. Right, and let's say I'm going to put some eyes on here just to show you. We can kind of complicate things a little bit. <laughs> this guy looks like he's wearing a face mask right now, but we're gonna. So let's say we could easily put a smile on there or something, right? And we could give it some kind of hair and some ears, and then we could, let's say, turn this into somebody wearing a skirt or a kilt right with sleeves or shirt instead of you know like so you know you could see how we could quickly you know and if I I guess I should have this is <laughs> anyway uh, and then I can turn this into a pretty muscle bound character by just widening this whole thing, giving it these big, so I'm just doodling really is what I'm doing. So this is like a, some kind of a muscle bound wood chopper. Okay. So that's, a, that's a funny, weird drawing. Um, again, we're just warming up, but I would encourage you to do something like this. Just when you're doodling, just start adding different things here, you know, like this could be somebody with, it's a detective, right? And we have, I don't know exactly how to draw that uh, Sherlock Holmes hat, but I think it's something like that, right? So all of a sudden, drawing little things in their hands takes that to a whole level. Okay, so if you're doing that, then you're probably nice and primed and ready to draw something a little bit more complicated. And we're going to jump into the uh, the main lesson for today. So let me see. Oh, actually, you know what? Well, hmm, I want to bring up some images. Looking at um, wow, look at all these people. People from Australia. People I know from Vancouver. Wow, this is fantastic. All these people from all over the world tuning in. So. Um, let me see. Wow, we're already over halfway through 
the the class now. Um, so, and I'm so amazed that so many people have continued following the show all the way through so far. So, um, how can I show you? And you know what? I'm gonna put. Let's sorry. Let's make another one of these. Ah. Um, okay, my apologies for the slight delay here. All this technology. I usually just hand out photocopies to people and then they're off and running. So... I'm going to show this here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to draw some animals in a very, very simple way. So we're going to try to get to this elephant based on just using simple shapes. All right. So the first thing when we're drawing something like this is we've got to figure out like how much room on our page is this drawing going to take up so i'm going to create another one of these and let's put that there in this here okay so here's my sketchbook I'm going to turn the page, and if I was to try to draw, you know, if I just said as a warm-up, let's draw that elephant, you'd be like, oh my goodness, this is, how am I going to make that happen? All right, so the first thing I would do is I'm going to draw a box on my page here, so that we have some idea of how much, how big this drawing is going to be. Right. Okay. Next thing is I'm gonna draw this little horizon line in the background, um, and I'm drawing it lightly. And, you know, I'm gonna use some different colors here. That I think people find that helpful. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to start identifying where some of these uh, circles are gonna be, because what we want to do is we want to look at at this complicated drawing of an elephant, and we want to figure out if we can break it down into its most simple kind of shapes, just like we were doing with the stick figure, right? If I said draw a person, you're like, oh, I don't know where to begin, but start seeing like rectangles, legs like rectangles, a head like a circle, that helps get us onto the page, and then we can start chiseling it away and adding more and more detail. Okay, so with this elephant, the first thing we're going to do is let's put, there's kind of a central kind of a, a hump right in the center here. And even if this is so obvious at first, just follow along, just pretend like you're understanding it, and it will make sense very quickly. So... And then I'm going to have another one in behind here. And then this is going to be the head right here. So I teach students at an art school, a big university here in Canada, how to draw. And usually, you know, students, they'll come in and they'll just start drawing the, the you know, they'll go right to... Let's say this is the elephant on the bottom. They just start drawing this, and they start trying to draw a tusk down here, and then they come down here, right? So they they're they're trying to draw the finished drawing right from the beginning, and what ends up happening is things start kind of getting out of control, right? All of a sudden they're drawing, and then oh, I'm. Uh, how do I, my feet are now off the page, 
Oh, geez. Okay, what's happening here? Um, and then, you know, so, and but you, but you might start off with this beautiful drawing right here, and then things start kind of falling apart as we expand. So we want to start like this, by drawing simple shapes. And already I can see that maybe this shape here was a little bit too big. Maybe some of you drew that and you're like, oh, i got to change. But that's okay. We want to be able to make these adjustments at this state. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to, let's say we're going to add the trunk in here. So, and actually, I'm just going to just start with a rectangle. All right, it kind of looks a little bit weird to start out, but that's okay. And then let's draw a leg. And then another leg. And then I'm going to just draw all of these like that. And so this, again, now I'm kind of, I'm, the, the image is starting to come into focus. And right here I can see, oh, the legs fit into the picture. Nothing's being chopped off on the outside of the page or the frame. So things look good. If I wanted to make any adjustments, now would be the time to do it. So let's now start kind of adding some detail, right? So here, let's put one of the tusks in here. And I'm going to put another tusk in here, and it kind of disappears in behind. Um, let's put an ear on this elephant. And you can see I'm just drawing a big triangle. Okay. And then I'm just going to define for myself, these are where the front legs are going to go. And the back legs, they could go on this same plane but we're gonna make them go a little bit further back. So I'm just gonna kind of chop the tops of those, uh, the feet off. So I'm gonna move that back, okay. I'm also just gonna add little triangles to these feet just to kind of, okay. Um, and let's say the eye, um, upside down V above it. So again, we're now kind of in the vicinity of this drawing. Things are starting to kind of percolate, come together. Let's think about where the knees would be, where these legs would bend. So I'm just going to identify where those are. Since these legs are a little bit shorter, I'm going to kind of see they're kind of a little bit higher where the bend in the knees go. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do, and uh, maybe I'm just going to use my eraser to clear up the drawing I did down here just for our purpose. This next thing I think is really important. Like, I'm going to kind of do another drawing. I'm do, so I just kind of watch here rather than uh, follow along. So... One of the, the uh, things that we have at our disposal as artists uh, is by layering shapes on top of one another, right? Like, even just here with my hands, if I draw, if you see all of these fingers, right, then, and as opposed to this hand where you can kind of only see part of them, then we know that this hand is on top of this hand, right? Now, I know that sounds so ridiculously obvious, but when it comes to drawing, we can kind of take this same idea to this drawing. So let's say if I want, if I've got two legs side by side, but I want one leg to look like it's in front of the other, right? Then I can make a very simple kind of change by let's say drawing this, see how <laughs> this, uh, this, just by kind of adding this in front of there, makes it look like this leg is in front of this one, and this one is a little bit in behind. Versus, let's do this again, right now, 
this leg looks like it's in front of this leg. And I can even highlight what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of a shadow under here, right? So let's do this with our, uh, our elephant. So we have this leg is in front of the other, right? So I'm going to come here and draw it like this. And I guess this, this ear is kind of maybe a little bit long, so I'm going to kind of shrink it down. But the great guidelines is the guidelines is not about getting things into the right place immediately. It's getting something onto the page that you can then make use to, to make adjustments, right? You can kind of see like, oh, okay, a little bit too small, so now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so then we have, a, just like I was just explaining, so this part of the body is in front of this part of the body. Alright, so we have this coming up here, and then I'm gonna, right now maybe this elephant's looking a little long, so again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move these legs just a little bit over, and maybe your drawing was perfect right out of the gate and that's that's great oops these my pencil could use a little bit of a sharp all right and these and these here and then i'm going to go over top kind of like you imagine like a blanket laying over top of something right so it's the skin is laying over top of this form Plug my pencil sharpener in here momentarily. And then let's come on down to this tusk. And if I want to make, or not the tusk, the trunk, I can make it even a little bit wobbly to give it some texture. So, we're, this is just a, is still part of our warm-up, but this kind of gets us into the ball here. So then we can kind of just add a little bit of a shadow under here, and that can even kind of clear up some of, you know, obscure some of our previous pencil lines. Oops. Um, and you can kind of add any kind of texture, or you can... What I would also do is kind of darken some of these legs a little bit that are... And kind of just add a little bit of shadow underneath here. And we talked about how to do some of that kind of stuff in the last few classes, right? So under here, it's going to be nice and dark. All right, we can just add a little bit of shading to the sides. I think elephants have a little tail, don't they? So look at that, that took us like maybe 10 minutes, but I was also explaining things. So <clears throat> if you want, you, you can see the image of the elephant on your bottom left corner of the screen. If you want to continue to develop that, you can just pause and you can add more detail, but let's, we're gonna kind of push forward here. So <clears throat> here's another drawing. I'm gonna flip to another page. You can use the bottom of your page if you like. Drawing of a uh, giraffe <laughs> had to think for a second what we're looking at so again we have the the image in the top right corner shows I'm just gonna bring myself <clears throat> back into view so the image in the top right corner shows the very sketchy way that it's been broken down and we move towards the the bottom left corner now <clears throat> considering what we were just talking about do you notice anything odd about the the third drawing closest to the bottom of the page is there anything odd about let's say particularly the legs of that giraffe now i'm not gonna usually if i was in a class i'd, I'd, I'd uh, wait for people to put up their hands 
can't really do that here. But what you should notice is the um, the the back, the hind legs of that giraffe appear a little bit strange, right? The one that is apparently closest to us is kind of folded over, you know, and back. like it's this particular, really, I can't show you here, but it, it looks kind of odd. So we're going to correct that in our drawing here. So let's say I'm going to go to another blank piece of paper here. I'm going to do a big drawing and let's start out with we're going to start in the middle i kind of like working from the center Actually, i'm just going to use this red or orange again just uh so that you can see what these are, are my under drawing so these could be very very lightly drawn It'd be almost invisible except to you all right so here's this kind of back shape and then let's draw the neck. And then you can make your giraffe as long and tall as you like. And then let's put a little head in there. And we'll come back later to see if there's any detail. And then we can say, well, how long are these legs going to be? I'm just going to draw really quickly where the bottom is going to go. And then. <laughs> Look how skinny those legs are. Oh my goodness. That's okay, because we can always make any adjustments. So I start out with something like that. And I can say to myself, okay, well, if these legs might be a little bit long, or this neck is maybe a little bit short, right? So I, I can make a choice. If I want to extend this neck... Well, then I'm going to push the boundary of the, the page. I might even go off the page. So the easiest thing to do would maybe let's see what would happen if I make these legs just a little bit shorter. Well, maybe I'll make them even shorter than that. All right, so this is why doing this kind of um, it's very simple drawing to start is really helpful because I'm only, I've got like 10 lines drawn on here. I can already Okay, so let's all right, so I'm just going to really quickly say that's the bottom. Now, let's identify. I'm not a. I don't really know much about giraffes, but I'm just going to um, put some knees in here, and I think they're kind of legs bend a little bit backwards. We're not going to spend too long in this drawing. It's just again about getting ourselves into the zone here where we can start kind of illustrating this so i look here and i think well maybe this leg needs to move over a bit you can see it can be a little confusing um this one i think okay so now let's start adding some detail and go over it with this um uh, blue pencil and now i can kind of get a little bit more uh, I can kind of go outside of the lines add a little more nuance all right and there's this kind of little hump there all right and we can kind of come down here for the back let's say I'm gonna go this one leg to, to these do their legs kind of bend like this I don't know um Kind of uh, reminds me of that uh, that robot. You see that? What is the um, uh, the Boston Dynamics or whatever that that thing that that robot that can kind of run around? There, I saw there was some footage of one of those things kind of patrolling the streets of Singapore. <laughs> really, <laughs> looks so creepy. Okay. So I don't know if this is how the giraffe actually works. If it if it if there's somebody out there who knows a lot about giraffes, they're angrily typing away in the comments. <laughs> okay. So again, 
very simple drawing. And that's where we want to focus our attention at this particular time right now, is very, very simple drawings. So then we kind of go here and add, you know, the spots all over. All right, so you could continue doing that if you wish. Okay, so I'm gonna we're gonna do I think one more quick drawing, and then we're going to do a kind of a, a more finished drawing for today, as promised in the thumbnail of the video here. So we're gonna draw this very simple cat. So we have, you know, it's. If I just said draw the drawing on the right, I think a lot of people would be a little bit confused or intimidated. They might start trying to drawing the eyes and move to the nose and draw the whiskers, and then some some problem may arise as we do this. So let's use the the technique that I'm showing you. I'm gonna kind of build this step by step. So let's say we've got this head. So I'm gonna. Start with the head here, and yours could be more circular or oval, it doesn't really matter. And here's this body here, whoa, look at that. And then, you know what, I'm going to make this, the head, I'm going to move it over a little bit here. Because I kind of like, you know, when um, uh, cats and dogs kind of, you know, they their head will kind of crooked and give you that that look like they think you're losing your finger. they're trying to figure you out right so i'm gonna we've got let's move this up let's put some paws down here little circles and then here's the back side of, of this cat and let's I'll put these ears on here so maybe it makes it a little bit easier for you to see where I am. Okay, so this is what I would do if I was going to try to draw that cat. I would start out very simply like this. And again, these little orange lines are just my guidelines. So I, I wouldn't draw them as dark as I'm doing right now, but just so it shows up on your computer screen or TV screen, I'm going a little bit darker. So now let's identify where these eyes are going to go. So I'm going to put an eye here and an eye here. I got this nose and mouth. Okay. And you know, why not put a tail coming out here, maybe on the back like that. Okay. So now let's go into some detail. Now, previously, you know, I've been drawing with this very solid line and the solid lines work really well for, you know, if I'm trying to draw like a robot with kind of very smooth kind of skin, then that works really well. But if I'm trying to draw like a, a cat that's got fur, I'm gonna need a slightly different technique. So. Instead, I'm going to use kind of a sketchy line, right? And that works really well for the kind of fur that I might see on this cat, right? So this kind of sketchy line is a lot like, you know, I think of it like two steps forward, one, or one step back, two steps forward, one step. And depending on kind of how furry you want your cat to be, all right. Um, and then we'll give this is kind of a little bit of a cartoony kind of character, but that's okay. And we can also, so 
look at that. that this took us very little time and we're already we've got like a cat here on the page now i would encourage you to spend just a little bit more time going around here and adding a little bit more depth to it by darkening your drawing in all right so again trying to get to that black right that number eight in our drawing right to these are the hind legs right and so we're going to kind of darken that and let's say we want some stripes all right so there's and then we can kind of give it a little bit of shading under the neck here and on the face Again, whether or not this is a perfect cat or not, obviously I can't see what you're doing, is kind of irrelevant. It's, I think, especially when you're just starting something on the page that you can kind of, you know, that, that you know, you're, you're maybe not think you're going to hang it on the refrigerator, but you're feeling like, hey, this is better than anything I've done bef lately or, or that I thought I was capable of doing. Like, if you struggled at drawing stick figures and now you know we're 40 minutes later and you're drawing a cat like that and you're giving a little bit of shading using some of the lessons we've already learned over the past few weeks that would be a huge achievement i would be really proud of myself if that if this is where i i was um so let me oops let's just bring uh, So, okay. So if uh, if you're done there, let's we're gonna go to this next page, and I'm gonna show you how to draw that uh, this tiger that, um, that I showed in. In fact, where I have a I have the original here somewhere. Big maybe I'll get it out as we go and. Um, I'm just going to enlarge this here, and then I'm going to show you on the other version here. So, here is this big, beautiful, majestic animal. And we want to take that picture and put it onto here. So, so far what I've been doing is I've been showing you how to you know, kind of do the step-by-step -step using the simple shapes to recreate a drawing. And recreating a drawing is easier, generally, than drawing from, from a photograph. Because so far, you've, we've kind of seen, you know, the, 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 the drawing is somebody who's simplified the, the, the real thing down into some kind of essential line. So that already saves us a bunch of steps. This way, now we've got to kind of find all the shapes on our own. We don't have the kind of little cheat sheet that I showed you before. So things are going to be a little bit more difficult here. So how do we find the the basic shapes of this tiger? So to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to sharpen my, my color pencil. <laughs> okay. So the I often kind of like starting finding like the head. And there's kind of the the head of the of this tiger. All right. Now there's way more complicated shapes in here that I haven't drawn. I'm not worrying about those yet. I'm just want to start out in the, in the most basic shapes possible. Now this tiger's kind of got this big hump, and you might see this part, but this kind of thing. This it kind of disappears as it goes into the torso, but just draw it anyway. Just practice your shapes, right? So we got two circles in here, right? And you can kind of go over them as many as times as you want, right? Because we're gonna color it in and we're gonna 
um, add. So it's, a lot of this stuff is going to disappear. But if you're if you're worried, then you could also erase a little bit at this point. I would say drawing lightly is the easiest at, at this stage. And then let's we're going to draw the torso here. Well, I, I'm going to draw. We've got this here. Okay. You can see as I'm drawing, like I'm I'm searching, right? That's why you see these. It's not just one perfect shape each time, right? I'm kind of sketching it out. And then let's add. We've got a, a leg down here, so let's add one leg here. And then there's a little gap here, so I'm gonna add another leg. Here and it, in the photograph, it comes down a little bit further. So, but we'll, we're not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to kind of go to the back here and add another leg, and then this other ba back leg was kind of slightly obscured. Okay, so here. You know, I've got my, my image generally in place, right? This is also helps figure out the composition. Am I happy with this right now? Are there any major changes that I would like to make at this stage? I want to I want to look carefully here. So I think if you're drawing, this is the most important part. This is the foundation of your drawing, right? At this point, um we can make any changes shrink things up make things smaller you know i may like for instance there's a little gap between here uh the, the front legs and hind legs that is maybe a little bit bigger than it is in the photograph so if i wanted i could kind of condense this well let's just do that i was going to say oh i'm just going to move forward but i want to you see that this is something it's easier to do now than it would be to do 20 minutes from now. And then maybe I went a little bit too far, so I can cut that down. And I know this looks a little confusing. If I was using, I'm just gonna erase a little bit. Maybe that will simplify things for people a little bit. Okay. So I got this down like that. Okay. So now let's kind of start adding a little bit more detail here. So I'm going to go, to, let's go to the face. Let's figure out where his eyes are. Eyebrows somewhere around here. And I'm going to, I'm making things a little bit kind of cartoony just for our sake here. Okay. I'm not gonna find where these ears are somewhere like this. Like that. And this mouth. Okay, and of course there's the, all the different kind of striping and everything on here. Um, what else could we add? We know this is kind of where this leg is, and we can see this other leg kind of comes all the way up and kind of attaches almost to that other circle. Uh, I'm going to simplify these kind of the feet a little bit, just like everything I'm simplifying. <laughs> and again, I don't know anything, I don't know where the, the knees are going to be somewhere, I don't know, in, in between here, or elbows, or whatever, however the anatomy of a, of a uh, tiger works. Okay. 
Okay. So now we've got, I think, everything in place, right, with, with my little sketch. So I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to color this in. Now, if you want to just use black and white, you can do that. Um, I'm just going to find a few different colors that I might want to use here. So I've got some oranges, yellows. Sorry, I'm going to look for brown and and I, I can't even I don't even have my original drawing up at all so I'm just um, I'm drawing this from scratch all over here so, and you'll see, I'm gonna I you may have seen I've pulled out in a purple here as well and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those shortly here but so I've got a kind of a nice selection of just some reds and oranges and yellows and stuff and even a little brown uh, when i'm coloring i try we're going to use a little bit of black but i think it's all to use some color rather than just go right into the black okay so let's bring our image back up on the screen now the next thing that i would do is let's say you know what, I'm actually going to go right to, I'm going to pick out this blue. So, and I'm going to add a little bit of some of the stripes on here. So I'm going to identify very quickly where stripes are on this tiger. I'm worried about getting it all right. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not trying to make something that could, you know, somebody could track down this exact tiger in the jungle, right? I'm just, um, I'm just kind of trying to get the, the basics on the page here. And I'm using this blue instead of a black to, to go over some of the lines that I think need to be darkened. I can even kind of add a look, start adding some shading in here. And you know what? I'm going to just enlarge this a little bit here. Just so I can see. Now there's again so many I love these creatures. There's so much detail. In here I'm not gonna get a chance to do all of it and I'm gonna allow myself to kind of play around a little bit and to do creative decisions um, let me see Man, I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, just draw. I I just love <laughs> drawing things all the time, and it's it's I find it just so rewarding because you create something on a page in your sketchbook that. It wasn't there before. There, you took a blank page and turned it into something, right? You know, think about like, you know, a, a famous artist can, you know, Picasso is famous for going into a restaurant with, you know, 20 friends sitting down and, you know, ordering all the, the best champagne. And then at the end, you know, the bill comes and he would just do a sketch on the, the bill and then say, I will, I'll pay the, the, the bill, the whatever, $500, or I'll give you this doodle that I just did right now. And invariably, people would say, gosh, and I probably could sell that, uh, that sketch now for a couple thousand dollars at, at the very least, right? So, and just taking just a regular scrap piece of paper and doing something kind of, transforming it right the magic of uh 
of of drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go up here a little bit. And I'm gonna come down and draw this. Again, I'm using a bit of a, a sketchy line. So I'm, I like this, um, if I'm using colors when I'm, when I'm uh, drawing, I like using opposing colors to, to, for illustrations because those opposing colors are going to add a little bit more depth. If I just used black, it's going to kind of deaden the image. now to see how I did the, the one in the thumbnail. <laughs> like, wonder how closely these are going to match up. Um, the other, what's great also about these kind of stripes, you're drawing people with like checker patterns on their shirt, is it really helps kind of show the volume, right? Like I can use this to kind of go up curve these lines all the way around and now it just starts to look like it's getting some shape without really having to do too much work like these stripes are doing a lot of it for me so <laughs> I said I was gonna do this in 20 minutes and I and we can but I just just want to just get into all the detail here. But I think that's important to to remember is that, you know, not all of us have unlimited amounts of time to draw. We, you know, we've got families, we've got jobs, we've got other responsibilities. So if you can um, uh, get something onto the page quickly, that is really, really satisfying. Like, yeah, sure, you could spend four hours doing any drawing, and the likelihood is, is it's going to kind of turn out, and you're going to be happy with it. But can you do something in 20 minutes on your coffee break or lunch, you know, that, that you could feel happy with in your sketchbook? Okay. So I'm just going to say zoom back out. So now let's, I've got a bunch of stripes on here, and those stripes are, look, if I wanted, right, just to show you, well, let's, let's add a little bit of other colors in here. I'm going to use the side of my pencil to, I'm adding a little bit of yellow in here. Maybe places that don't even have yellow. Because I'm with these are nicer, a um, little bit more expensive colored pencils, and what's great about um, colored pencils that are a little bit more expensive is that you can layer them kind of endlessly. Really, really cheap pencils from you know uh, uh, the dollar store or wherever have a lot of wax in them, and they can be a little bit trickier, more frustrating to uh, build up layers with because they almost like the the or kind of or the first layer acts a little bit like a resist will kind of resist a little bit okay so i'm gonna try to get this done in five minutes here okay so just going over layering more on here Building this up. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful to leave some white space in here as there actually is some white on the fur of this creature.
you out there seen the the Tiger King? I thought that was pretty good. Although I don't know, if, I think everybody seems like there it's quite the, the uh, an assortment of characters there. I don't know if any if there's anybody who's particularly you know innocent. Um, okay, actually, let's let's put a little bit of some purple. In there again I just by adding like just the, see how th these eyes kind of glow a little bit with that purple in just going over some of these blue lines with some purple just gives it a little bit more kind of um, more life and it's not like I'm just kind of using these color like some people say well why are you using blue there's no blue in there well if you if you have photoshop and you have like a, a color picker you could go in and you would notice that there's more than just orange and brown in the picture where the um in those shadows you're going to get all sorts of colors whether it's just the colors as they actually are or just reflected colors from the sky and other places. Okay, and then I got some brown and I'm gonna put this, use some of this brown just to kind of add some shading. I'm gonna add maybe a little more shading than there was in the original photograph. And I think that's, what's important about that is just because if you're working from a photograph you sometimes have to draw things uh, in, I would say, like wrong in order to make it look right, right? Like if you're too faithful to the photograph, you can end up creating an image that looks a little bit awkward or strange. Um, just because things, we, we, we give photographs a lot more leeway, um, they kind of, can kind of look a lot more convincing but when we have a drawing and something looks a little bit odd, um, you can't just say, well, that's the way that it looked in the photograph. Well, okay, but the drawing looks awkward now. So, um, kind of racing here to get this all finished. Um, kind of adding a little bit of fur to kind of the the jowls of this creature here. Oh, and I gotta get some. Now, in the photograph, the, these, um, the whiskers are white. In the, there's no way to do that in the drawing. Um, I mean, there, there are some kind of more advanced techniques uh, you kind of use like like a paste, like water, to kind of create a wrist that you can draw over top of to kind of, and then you would rub it away, or you just have to be very diligent about like not um, uh, drawing in those areas there. But you know this, those brown um, whiskers I just drew there, I think work just as well. Okay. So I could color this endlessly to get it to look more like the original, but that's not really the point of today's lesson. The point is to try to make something that is, you know, some, somewhat believable. We understand that this is a lion and not, or sorry, you know, this is a, a tiger and not a lion or a house cat or anything like that, right? Um, see this hump that I've drawn a little bit artificial so even just kind of going over kind of giving on these uh, edges just a little bit of a some extra little hair around there can soften it up make it look a little bit more feral okay so um I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to add just, if I go over some of these lines, you kind of 
under here. That's gonna, that's, I think that's where I wanna kind of call it. I'm gonna add maybe a quick little shadow underneath. That is also helpful to kind of ground this. I could add some things in the background, trees or rocks. I could use, let's say the, the from one of our previous drawings, you know, this could be standing in the middle of a road or in a pathway, etc. Right, so you can yeah, I can continue to develop that, but a blank page to a drawing like this, and that took us about twenty minutes, I think would feel very successful for for me. I'm I'm happy with the way this looks, and if you're anything remotely like this, then I think you should be happy. Now, I will I will say you know there's sometimes a lot of people, especially when you're beginning, only see the problems. They look at a drawing. And they think like, oh, you know, this leg is a little bit weird, and the knees aren't working. Uh, this, the hair, you know, this, you know, blah 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 blah. You can go on and on and on and on. You know, nobody goes out and buys a bicycle, rides for an hour, and then says to themselves, well, I guess I can't win the Tour de France. I guess I'm a failure. I'm gonna sell my bicycle. Um, I'm just like. Clearly, I'm not cut out for this, right? That if you said that to somebody, they would just think that's absurd. It's mostly how people react when they look at their own drawings. Well, I guess it's not as good as like, you know, a drawing somebody paid a million dollars for. I saw in the news, so I guess I'm just not cut out to be an artist, right? Like, so you have to kind of um, have reasonable expectations, and. You know, if you're the other thing I would say is if your drawing did not out and you were not happy with it, instead of never, you know, exit out. I, it drives me crazy when people do that, and, and don't tear it out either. Just if you're not if you're not happy with it, sleep on it, look at it the next day, or use it in graffiti on top of it. Add a funny mustache like mine, or give it a baseball hat or a top hat or a monocle or a jacket, you know, a sports jersey, you know, like, or this is, you know, on the wall of a bathroom or a bus stop and you're, you know, people draw mustaches on signs and stuff all the time, right? So, use your drawing to to play with it and then who knows maybe you know like often say about let's say even this cat is let's say you did this cat drawing and you could decide yeah if i didn't if i thought it didn't turn out then let's give it a little hat and you just said like i said a monocle and we could have let's say a jacket on here <laughs> If I was really that unhappy with it, instead of tossing it out, we'll develop it even more. And then maybe by the end of this, you decide, oh, I've actually created kind of a cool character that, you know, I might want to use for something. All right, so there, I really don't believe there's such thing as a bad drawing. There's just drawings that, um, that might actually be very successful, but you're just not capable recognizing it yet um or drawings that just aren't finished that just need a little bit more work to it you know and if if you could also cut it into pieces and rearrange it create some abstraction you save it for something else there's all things that we can do with our drawings okay so um i'm just gonna bring up this here so on the screen, I'm just kind of posting, because this will be kind of the end of the lesson portion of today, and then I'm going to look at some photos. I think some people sent some things in. Um, so for next week, what I want you to do is find some photographs or other people of animals, and it's the, the best are, are ones where you see the head of an animal, maybe isolated uh, and the full body, rather than just like the head and two arms, or because 
to, they can be a little bit harder finding those larger shapes. Um, that uh, it, it's a little bit easier to find when you see the full body or you're just drawing the head. So try to find some of those images. And then the next step would be to try to draw the basic shapes that you see in there. And we're going to continue this next class. So um, don't worry about if you, this, we just power through this in an hour. So don't worry about if you're still struggling with it, we're going to develop and work on this some more next class. But just try seeing if you can find those basic shapes inside of a complicated form, right? And then if you've managed to do all that, which is already a, a big ask, but if you want to kind of give yourself a little bit of an extra exercise uh, before our class on Thursday, is take one or two of those sketches where you had just drawn some basic shapes and try to develop it like the one we did here of the tiger, right? So, um, and then if you're really happy with it or, you, or and you want to share it with me, then send it to me on the social media. There's different kind of uh, links are, are down below. And if, if not, if you're really unhappy with it, well then, um, maybe consider even sending that to me so that I can give you feedback on your drawing that you're not happy with. So, okay. If, um, I think, does that make sense? So, I'm going to, let's pull up, uh, I think there's, wow, oh my goodness, look at all these comments. I'm so... So if if you're if you are done for the day and you want to um, and and you uh, want to pour yourself a glass of wine, oops, why did that show back up? Sorry. Um, and you're you're done, then we'll see you on Thursday. Please do me a favor, like and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, you're welcome to a small donation. There's a PayPal link below there and I just got a um, I, I'm sorry I don't know the, the names of a few people who just sent me some stuff right before class began so I really want to thank all those people who um, have been you know generous supporters of the class and this and helping keep all the lights on down here so I'm just gonna now go through some of the comments so that, that all these comments that have been left here and then see if I can help um, answer any questions. Okay. Okay, so we've got some images on Instagram here, so I'm going to pull that up. And while that's loading, oh, we got Australia, Jeannie, or Jean, Jeannie, Jeannie Fisher from Australia. Hi, my sister lives down in Australia, in Sydney. Um, so it's like what probably 10 in the morning there right now so thanks for getting up early and for drawing with me first thing in the morning on a wednesday <laughs> down under uh debbie from says hi from winnipeg hi debbie um and then uh, my wife's uncle steven is here yes and there was our daughter who was having a difficulty always seems to get upset right in the middle of these classes so it's like unfortunately i can't run run off and help and there's my mom saying it looks complicated well um i hopefully it wasn't too complicated because the idea is trying to just find the simple shapes simple shapes even if it didn't work out you can try starting over and try drawing it again um and then heidi said oh, it looks like she's missing a class She'll have to, you, you can obviously, this video is up there on the web until time immemorial, immemorial, is that? Uh, <laughs> and you can watch it as, as often as you like or pause whenever you feel per perfect. Um, your first cat drawing, that's great. And uh, Gnome, Gnome, that's a cool name. Uh, thank you for your class. Can you please share which pencil uh, crayon brand you recommend um do i have a, the box of my pencil crayons around here <laughs> i got stuff scattered everywhere as, as my wife would say says let me see i thought i saw them here on the table um so i, I could show you the, the the box but let me see if i can find 
I think I have a few different kinds in here. Um, the they the, let me see. I can write down the the brand. Let me find. Um, so this the brand of these pencil crayons. I probably actually won't show up on the overhead. Caron Dash, which is a Swiss company. These are more expensive. Is that how you spell that? Um, and what's, I think these are all, I'm not sure, these, I buy so many different kinds of things. And they, these might be water, or maybe not. But some of these, if you get a little bit of water on them, in fact, I don't have any, my tea's gone. But you can, if you activate it with a little bit, it kind of turns into like a watercolor, which is good or bad depending on on uh, the situation. But I think like a box of 50 of these is could be somewhere like 60, 70 bucks maybe, as opposed to like a box of 12 for a dollar fifty at Dollarama. Uh, now you don't need real. I, I I I hesitate to say go buy like these expensive colored pencils. Um, because I think one thing that stops people, especially when you're beating, is, um, uh, well, here, look, this is a Crayola. The one I was using for almost most of the drawing today was a, just a regular Crayola, you know, pencil from, I think, probably from the dollar store from one of my, I bought for one of my classes. I just always am leery about recommending nice, artist grade materials for people who are just beginning because sometimes people then think like well i've got these 60 dollar pencils and then when i work it out this one costs like a dollar 25 and i gotta make sure every single mark on the page is perfect otherwise you know i've just wasted all this money and you know um and that can be like a a, a real um uh great excuse for people to procrastinate and to because I've had people come to their sketchbook because they're waiting for the day when they're going to be really good and do good drawings in the sketchbook. So they have their nice sketchbook, even though it might only cost 20 bucks, and then they're drawing on photocopy paper because they're just like, well, once I do a really good drawing, I'm going to put it in here. And then, of course, by the end of the class, the, the, the sketchbook is blank. And I think, what a wasted <laughs> opportunity. Like, you know, so... Don't worry about having the best materials. You can do everything you just did in, in this entire class with just like, a, you know, a 30 cent pencil you found on the sidewalk, right? You do not need the most, you know, like any really high quality material at all. Um, <laughs> Steven says, uh, Tiger looked like a rhino and Jerry Sign mix. That's pretty fun. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad that you, and you like the, the look of your tiger. Okay, so I'm going to, let's find, Yannick sent some photos here of some drawings. Oh, cool. Okay, so. Oh, I'm just going to quickly drag all of these into... <laughs> Cool. Okay. So. I'm going to bring this up onto the screen a little bit bigger. And again, if you have images that you'd like to send me, uh, I encourage them because it's, I think, I mean, it's just fun for me to see what, what people have been up to. And... To get a little bit of feedback, I think is important for everybody, especially when you're when you're learning. Um, okay, so let's bring this down here. I think this one might have been your first one, Yannick, and then I think this was the second one. I don't know if there was a particular. But you know what's cool about these drawings, these landscapes? It almost look like an animation. 
I don't know what, what order, but we have these kind of clouds coming and then they're creating, I love the shadows under here. And then these, like they're this almost look like an explosion of, uh, of clouds. So, um, I think I, I love, there's, there's a lot of depth in these images. Like if I go back to this one, right? I love the way that you shaded this with these, you know, lines that are, are pulling us in towards here. And it's a really subtle thing. I think most people, if they were shading this, rather than those lines that are kind of going into the picture, just kind of go across like that, right? Whereas you're and then we have the way that you've kind of curved these lines in here makes it seem like there's kind of a, you know, big valley and a kind of just a sharp kind of cliff that goes into where the river is. So all of these things really kind of help describe this landscape and give it shape and volume, right? I wonder where this rock is. This is um, I have a feeling this is a really famous like, uh, was this down in, like, Arizona or something? Uh, it's like, the backdrop for a whole bunch of Western films. Um, it looks so familiar. Anyway, um, I love these clouds, too. They've got a lot of volume to them. And it looks like here you're using a little bit of smudging, maybe, with yours. Uh, we haven't really talked about that so much in this class. I think on the... The... Next Monday's class, we're going to be doing a little bit of that. Um, but this this looks fantastic. What's nice about that is the contrast between the clouds and their shadows. So the softness of these shadows down here makes us think that they are potentially shadows. That... Sorry, as opposed to a clump of dark trees on the on the ground or something, right? Because the clouds tend to kind of cast kind of a slightly undefined shadow. Like if we saw a really kind of blocky shadow on the ground, it might be a little space to land on top of us. Um, and again, like look at the, the way that you've got this, the, the, the river kind of etched into this valley, right? So we feel that the, the water, you know, below this surface. And even the little of the ridge around here is kind of nice. All that worked really well. And then the way that you've described the the mountain or hill or this land formation in the background is, is really nice. This this one here, which I think was the one that you uh, sent, um, I think is super dynamic. We have this these clouds kind of pushing towards us. Now it makes me feel like we're looking in, I guess in all of these, but clearly in this one, it makes me feel like we're on another plateau, like almost as high as this one, kind of looking down and these clouds are kind of going to pass below us, right? If we wanted this cloud, if we want to be kind of towards on the ground, like maybe, I, th I think I did a creation of this last week but um you know if we wanted these clouds to look like they're passing above us then we would have instead of coming down here they're coming above because usually the eye line if you think of the eye line is is kind of where or the the horizon is kind of like another way people would describe it as is the eye line so this sort of is where the eyes are, the person looking at this scene. So if these clouds are below it, then they're below the eye line. They could be kind of coming below us, right? So kind of like what you've done here, if these, if this is our eye line, these clouds are going to kind of come over top of us if they were, if they were moving towards us, right? Um, they're great. I don't really have any, you know, your feedback. I suppose it might be nice if there was a little bit more color in here. Um, although it is kind of nice, just this kind of monochrome with a little bit of the blue highlight. I really feel like this river kind of twisting, moving, it, and then it gets very, very small as it goes to maybe this is the source um, of, the, of the water. 
Yeah. So uh, I guess another small little thing is you may want to consider also adding a little bit of shading into the sky and just very a little subtle amount, but just something so it's not just pure white, I think would be, those would be my suggestions for those drawings. I, th I think that might be all that, um, <laughs> oh great, I'm, um, My mom was drawing along says, the tiger looks weird. That's okay. Again, I know that your drawings, as you work on them, they may not feel like the best you're capable of, of doing. And I'll say that's the same thing that I feel whenever I'm making a artwork, is that I always feel that the drawing always comes just a little bit short of my expectation. And so that there's something about art that is always a little bit elusive. That just, you're like, oh, next time I'm going to do it, right? And it's like this, that's how you get hooked into making art or playing music or dance. You're just like, oh, I, I know I can do better next time. And then you want to do again and again and again and, and you get sucked into it. And then you, 20 years later, you're teaching people how to draw <laughs> online. Um, so... If, if you're not happy with your drawing, if you're not, like, I, I bet you there's nobody out there who says, like, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. I'm done. Uh, let's uh, do skydiving now. I've, I've mastered drawing. Like, nobody feels that way. Everyone is always feeling that there's room for improvement. Oh, Yannick says this was National Monument Valley in Arizona. I, th I thought it was. I thought it was. That it looked very, very familiar, that. Uh, um, okay. So I think those are all of the images and things that people have sent in. So, uh, again, for just people who are still, we've got like 20 people still online here. Um, just as a quick reminder of, for next week, is finding some images. Try doing these exercises that we did today over um, a few times. It doesn't, you can even... Actually, you know, while I'm thinking about this, I, I wonder if I have any magazines around here. One of the things that I would suggest, let me see if I can find something, is to, I'm just going to grab, I think I got an old magazine here, right around the corner. So... Here's like a, uh, an old wedding magazine. <laughs> um, and uh, my wife and I got married a few years ago and then she had all these magazines and I, she attempted to throw them out but then I took them out of the trash because <laughs> I, I like using them for gluing things. Rather than using scrap paper, I can just glue on one page and then turn the page. And I've, So I'm just seeing if there's anything quick lesson that I can just kind of go. Hmm, not so well. Let's just use this cover here. So even just take this giant Sharpie just for our, our purpose. But, you know, I could do something like this. Like just quickly outlining this form of the person, right? And right, so I mean, this is not stuff at all, but the newspaper just started kind of drawing the basic shapes. Let me see if there's anything else here. Like, um, Right, and we have, let's, I'm just going to simplify all of this, right? And you're just kind of just drawing this way. It just all of a sudden is going to help you. I'm just going to do a few more here. I mean, these are already kind of cartoony, 
next class we're going to draw some more animals but we're also going to draw some other kinds of shapes like uh things you may even have in your pockets you know okay i guess there's not i have i could go on but i think you, you've got the idea here right it doesn't you don't need to uh just if you're drawing basic shapes over and over and over you're going to get better and better and better at it um and yeah i think we'll leave it leave it there for today so thank you so much please like and subscribe to, uh, to the channel if you're found this at any minor use to you what and whatsoever and um if you're feeling generous you're welcome to um Make a small donation to the channel. Link to the PayPal is in the description below. We'll see you guys on Thursday afternoon, or if you're in Australia, Friday morning. Okay, everybody. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in a couple of days.